So on a previous episode, we found a faulty compressor. So today I returned to get it swapped out and check everything out. Let's do some work. What's pretty cool about these uh, scales is that it gives you the option to keep your gross weight at the top there. So the tank weighs 17 pounds. You just hit the tear button. It zeroes out the actual uh, weight, but it keeps your gross weight. So that way you always know what the tank weighed before you started uh, either adding or, or removing refrigerant, depending on what you're doing. So pretty cool feature this thing has. All right, so this fitting here that I had, like a little 90 degree fitting, which I liked because it, to me, it held the weight of the dryer a lot better. But this is actually rated for uh, vacuums and it was leaking in here. I don't know that it just needs a new O-ring, but so I'm just gonna scrap that for now. And I just put on another uh, quarter inch to three eighths hose. That way I got my uh, filter dryer going down to the core tool there. So that's how I'm gonna have it set up. Normally I just have the one hose going directly in, but uh, this will work too. All right, so one thing to note, whenever you are recovering refrigerant, especially when it's really hot outside, your tank is gonna over pressurize. So we need to be able to cool that compre uh, the tank down so that way we can actually remove the refrigerant out of the machine. So it, it took all of the refrigerant out of the actual unit itself, but we still have 400 PSI in the machine and in this discharge hose here. So uh, what's cool about this particular um, recovery machine is that it has a self purge mode but what's going to happen with that high pressure on there it's just going to go into high pressure cutoff mode and it's not going to actually remove the refrigerant because this pressure the tank is just it's too high we got to cool it down so i've got this little adapter here it's made by supco 
and it's called the cool presser. So you just put it on your hose, it has a heavy duty magnet. Um, typically we use it to cool off compressors, but you can just stick it on the tank and it won't move. And we can just sit here and cool this down. And watch the pressure drop. So once we get the pressure down uh, to where it needs to be, then we can go ahead, switch into self-purge mode, get all the refrigerant out of the machine, and um, about ready to pull this compressor out. All right, so while that is cooling down, pressure is dropping pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna close the valve, and then put it over into self-purge mode. Now we can go ahead and remove what's in this machine. So what I did, I have this valve here, so that way I can make sure no refrigerant's getting back in there. We'll go ahead and close this valve. Turn that off. All right, so we have 10 PSI in the machine right now, so not very much at all. I have the valve shut here. So now what I can do is go ahead and close this off. Close this valve as well. And then when I remove this, there's not going to be much refrigerant at all coming out of the actual machine. See, that's it. No, pretty much nothing. So that's really nice, depending on the situation that you're in. If you don't want to have a bunch of refrigerant spewing, if you're inside, um, whatever the case is. And then the same thing down here. That's it. That's all you got. Now, of course, you're going to have refrigerant in this hose. But there's nothing that we can do about that, right? The, there's just going to be pressure in there, and it's um, de minimis at this point. But at least you have control over where you vent this. So it doesn't have to be where you're working. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I really enjoy having that because sometimes I'm working on commercial situations, um, and it's inside, you know, a mechanical room or wherever it is, and you don't want to be spewing refrigerant, so... Anyway, cool feature on the machine, self-purge, gets rid of it, anything inside the actual machine, and then valve off this hose, and you're good. Okay, so now that I've got the nitrogen on the braze mode, because when we are unsweating the compressor, we want to make sure that we're flowing nitrogen. And I also purged nitrogen for a little while just to make sure there was no gas or anything in the system. Um, I've got the core out on the high side there. So it's flowing out there. Um, and then inside here, what I like to do is on the compressor, I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. So that means I'm gonna unsweat the suction line first. That way when I'm reaching down in there, if I heat up the discharge side first, I might end up like burning myself. So I heat up and remove this, uh, the suction line at the bottom first, and then I'll remove the discharge line. And that's, uh, that's how I do it. Okay, cool. So the compressor is out. Now, here's the filter dryer that we're going to have to take out and uh, install a new one. So I never like to unsweat a filter dryer because 
if there's any kind of moisture or anything in that dryer, it can actually come out into the piping system. So it's always best to cut out your filter dryers. So fortunately, we've got enough room here and we've got room on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut as close as I can. And then there's plenty of uh, a flexibility here to be able to bring those pipes a little bit closer for the new dryer. All right, so check it out. It was gonna be a pain to braze the bottom side of that dryer way down there. Um, so what I did is there was plenty of flexibility with this little uh, capillary tube header to just bend it up so I can go ahead and braze the bottom and then I'll, I'll push it back down in there and then braise the top, which is much easier to get to. So that should be very helpful. All right, so real quick, I wanna be able to braise and flow, uh, I'm sorry, flow nitrogen whenever I'm brazing that one fitting. And because I don't have it, it all attached, there's just no way I'm gonna be able to flow nitrogen through this section here. So what I did is I, I capped off the, um, the discharge and the suction line right i capped off that line going into the top of the dryer and then i also capped off the the other side of the dryer but i put a hole in it so the nitrogen can go through so now the system should be completely closed up for the most part and we now can braze that Looks good. Fifteen minutes later. Okay, so for this vacuum setup, because we are pulling through the oil and the entire system, I have a two pipe design. So these are 3 8 connections going to the pump. These are 3 8 inner diameter hoses, and they go to quarter inch fittings on this side here. And then I have the uh, core tools on both sides, so we don't have cores on either one of those ports. And then I like to put my micron gauge as far away from the pump as possible. So we have an extra port inside on the discharge line here. So that's where the micro gauge goes. That should give us a good accurate reading. And I would assume uh, this is only gonna be like a 10 minute vacuum. It's already down to less than 700. It's only been running for maybe a minute. So this is a really nice setup. So it's been a couple jobs since I replaced the oil on the pump. So, one the cool thing about this pump is that you can change the oil on the fly and it has a spot here for an extra little can of uh, fresh oil. So this one's currently empty because that's what I used to uh, put in last time. So that stays right there 
all you gotta do while it's running, open your valve. You can see it draining the oil. Get your new one ready. Close your valve. Open, open the top. There you go. So now you just take the, the cap and you put it on the side to store it. And now you, you put this one here. So that'll be ready for when I change it next time. I just need to grab another uh, full bottle to put back in there. And put your cap on. There you go. Just dispose of this. You're good to go. Literally change the oil in under a minute while it's running. I love that. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all cleaned up and then I'm gonna check and verify that the charge is looking very good. Obviously it's a package unit, so I weighed in the charge, so I know it's perfect, but I wanna make sure that, you know, TXVs, all that are working properly once I actually clean the coil, um, clean the whole electrical panel there. I'm not gonna bore you with all that stuff. This has been a long enough video to begin with. So um, anyhow, just gonna get it all cleaned up and then get it checked out and make sure everything's looking good. I gotta clean the other system while I'm here. But uh, yeah, if you didn't see the other video where I troubleshooted it, um, troubleshooted it, where I troubleshot it, um, check it out in my video description. I'll leave a link down there for you. Came out here when it was a no cool call, uh, found a bad capacitor, replaced it. That's why you didn't see me install one today because I've already replaced it. Uh, anyway, go check it out if you haven't already watched it. Give it a thumbs up if you guys like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Till next time. You guys like me? Woo!